it's cultural, it's educational, it's promotional. It's thoughts and teens in focus and Guyana thoughts and teens. With youths of the community and how can the community help her youths. Your host is Patricia Trim, CEO founder of Thoughts and Teens in Focus and Circle of Dynamic Women of Power, meeting your needs in the community. Welcome to Thoughts and Teens in Focus. I'm your host, Patricia Trim. Welcome you to another edition of Thoughts and Teens in Focus. Yes, it's Thoughts and Teens, and we have some very tiny thoughts who will be talking to you. No other than Mercedes Narciss, who is running for um, city council uh, election for June, and also one of our own um, independent producer, um, call it, call it. Colette will be telling us more about her show and what she has on BCAT, Brick Art Media. And Mercedes will be talking about her election. And she will give us full information of what about the election, what it entails, what it entails, and how she's working within the community and what she will like the community to do for her as voting comes around. We said Mercedes was there for a very long time. It's time we give Mercedes a chance to run for election. She's a stallion in the community. She's been working hard with different communities, the youths of the community, and how can the community help our youths? And that's what Mercedes does. So I'm reaching out there as she tell her story, and then we will now join with Mercedes to listen to her story. Hi, everyone. I'm happy to be here. Um, I'm Mercedes Narcisse. I'm running for the 46th district, which cover Canarsie, Flatlands, Bergen Beach, Mill Basin, Mill Island, Marine Park, Garrison Beach, and Chipset Bay. I'm running for this position because I want to represent um, everyone in my community. I came to the district by the age of 17. My father was looking for a better place to raise us. And I stay there and I graduate through hard work. Actually, I graduated from high school and I earned my first degree as a registered nurse from a CUNY university in the community, not too far. And I gave birth to four wonderful children who are now professional in diverse field of disciplines. I became a small business owner. I serve my community. Um, I help others um, assist them with um, access of a different um, technology, different things that they needed in my community. I partnered with Brooklyn Chambers of Commerce. I became president later on of Avenue L Merchant Association. I'm a nurse for over 30 years, served the community as well. I started different, organized different organization in the community, um, including Kanasi by Choice to give residents platform to address different issues that, that matter to them. I am from that district. I love the district. This is um, the district that I know I came to, to love and worked in. Um, right now in June um, 22nd and starting voting June 12th to the 20th, we will have an opportunity to vote someone, which is me that I've been working in the district, never left the district. And um, someone may ask why I'm running. I wanna say in 2013, when I had the audacity to run for office with no money, with no endorsement no, from elected officials, now from unions, I had 6,000 votes. And I said to myself, the community understand what I'm about. And um, because they make me who I am today, it is uh, a matter of coming back and make it happen for, 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 for the community to address issues like such as, um, gun violence, such as uh, quality of life issues that we have that we need to address. Um, it is our district and I truly believe the voters should be the one who decide who should be in the office. I believe in government for the people run by the people. 
And that's why I'm here to run for the city council. Well done. What the hell just happened here? That's wonderful to hear, Mercedes. We now have our own independent program producer from Brick Art Media, and she will give us a link up of herself. Colette? Hi, Patricia. It's been such a long time since I've seen you, but you always make sure that you keep up with me, see what I'm doing, and I thank you for that so very much. Um, what I'm doing, I actually fell into a couple of things. I'm doing business consulting right now. Um, a lot of artists and a lot of uh, performers out of work now. So I'm helping them to find a way to understand this new environment that they're in and at the same time, make themselves relevant. At the same time, a lot of artists, I don't know why it is, but I have noticed that because I do a lot of artists uh, tax returns, they don't do their tax returns. So I'm keeping them you know, abreast of what needs to be done, making sure that they um, get their papers in and everything is done in the, in the proper manner. And I'm also filming. So um, there's a couple of things that I'm, I'm working on a documentary and I'm also um, working on a book. And um, if anybody knows me, I like to be busy. <laughs> so that's the things I have been doing. Um, brick, not going to brick, it's kind of different, you know? Um, you're used to having, um, you know, that camaraderie, but you don't always have it. So you have to find other things and other people that can get you um, the same type, maybe not the same type of camaraderie, but the same type of environment where people are striving and doing the best that they can. I also, this is a fun fact, I'm also the scorekeeper for an over 60 and over 50 basketball game that happens every Wednesday and every Sunday. <laughs> so that's what I'm doing. So nice to hear that, um, Colette. Now we ask Mercedes. Mercedes, I know that you are very strong in the community. And I would like you to tell us something more about the Black Lives Matter, if you were part of it, if you are there for um, injustice, and if you are seeking justice for um, Black lives in the community. I'm going to put the screen a little bit, and then you tell you, I mean, yeah. I'll tell you a little bit what you see there. Ha. Huh. Is that me over there? <laughs> <laughs> yes, it, it is important uh, for us um, to address issues that um, matter to us. As a community, as a Black person in the district, raised my four children in the district. Um, I understand what's going on, but when it comes to crimes and different issues that we're dealing with, like I will tell people, it's a um, crime issue. It's not an issue that that um, don't happen in silo is a combination of different issues over the years, lack of opportunities, lack of uh, um, after school program within our community, um, lack of um, housing. You know, we have to see the issue where they are before they tell us that we are the problem. We are not the problem when we're giving opportunity. We see it when you actually addressing issues like healthcare, mental health. And then you give the same opportunity. That's why I'm running. I'm running to level the playing field. It takes a village and we can have that village if we're sincere and giving the opportunity to everyone the way we're supposed to. And then yes, you say if we matter, yes, we are matter. We are smart people. We are resilient people. We are the only race actually that will say hallelujah and praise the Lord when people are torturing us and then we, we, we're not people that really want to commit crime. That's not true at all. Look at history. We don't hate people. We're just looking for opportunity. That's what we're looking for, Miss Pat. And, and when you touch that issue to say, if we matter, yes, we are matter. We are the, the same blood running to our event like everybody else. And if you look at back his history, according to all the study, we've been around. And we've been protecting others. We breastfed other people's kids. 
our mothers being tortured in front of us, our mm. fathers from our ancestors. That's what we come to when, that's why I give my pump to the Haitian community that decided in 1804 to get their independence. They understand that we are matter. We always matter. And then we have our brothers and sisters from all over travel through to understand we need the freedom wherever we are. Freedom is not the freedom of slavery putting a chain, it's opportunity. That's all we have. that's what we need. That's what we're asking. That's all. Give us opportunity to grow ourselves, to let it be. Give us the access of technology in our school building for our children. Give us the health care that we deserve in our community. The access, the transportation access, especially the seniors that need to look for health care, they, they don't drive. That's what we're looking for. We're looking for opportunity. And yes, we are matter in all levels. And when we have access, we offer it to others. Look at the example in Haiti again. When they had the freedom, what they did, they opened the gate for everyone that needs to be free. That's Black people. The bookmen from Jamaica, uh, Henry Christophe from Grenada was in Haiti because they organized to free others, not about ourselves. When we have opportunity, we don't hold it for ourselves. We help others. And that's the same thing we're asking today for our children, for the next generation to come, to give us the opportunity to grow and the space to grow. We don't need people to give us things. We need, we work. And yes, we are a matter of fact. And then that's what we're fighting for, for equity in our community. And that's why I'm running. That was very interesting. I know that you're a Haitian descent and you really work with the Haitian community. You bring all your Haitian passion, not only for the Haitian, but for every um, everyone and every race or creed that you can give your helping hand to. We now ask um, Colette, um, I know that you saw what was going on with the um, Black Lives Matter and how they were representing George Floyd. I know that you were one that would like to, wanted to go out there. What are your views seeing that George Floyd um, uh, accuser has been um, found guilty? How do you feel about it, Colette? Um, actually, it's about time. Um, I was not hopeful. And in fact, it's funny that you should ask me. Last Thursday, I was part of a clergy council to, um, in case the George Floyd um, verdict went the other way, to try and calm the community down in Harlem. And um, I sang at that event. But the purpose of the event was to let the community know you are loved. Please do not erupt into violence because of the foolishness of those who don't know better, or if they know better that they don't care. You have to try and keep your head. And um, that's what was said. And it was funny, not even funny, it was amazing that the police stayed throughout the whole entire thing. They had from the junior policemen, those who were not even policemen yet, to those who were mid-level, to those who were high level. And they stayed with us and they sang with us. And um, it was amazing. So as far as what happened, I did get to go, Patricia, and I, I did march. And um, it was very satisfying. Nothing bad happened to me like some of the, my, my friends. They got, tear, not, not, um, they got sprayed with pepper spray and mace and all this other stuff. That didn't happen to me. But I did march and um, I believe God was with us that day because there were a lot of people that didn't look very happy that we were marching, but we didn't care. And um, I'm also going to say this, Black lives matter but not to the exclusion that other lives don't matter. And I don't understand why people get so crazy when we say black lives matter. It doesn't mean that your life doesn't matter. It just means that our lives matter too, or as well. So I, that was, to me, I, don't, I never understood this. As soon as we want things for ourselves, everybody wants something. Like they never had anything to begin with. I just think that's very interesting. Patricia. It is always said that the greatest intelligent person were always the black race. 
They are the leaders, they are the inventors, they are the providers, they make things happen. When they had to work in, in the, the white slave kitchen, they had to improvise, improvise to make life easier for them. So that is why black people are always, always, and will always be the future of ahead. And that is why other races do not like us because we think constructively, we move ahead, we make things happen, we build, we break, we, whatever it is it takes to make our life happy, we do it. Mercedes, I want to talk about the women in prison. And I know that you are running for this council, uh, become a council member. I just hope and I pray that this is your time. This is your time to receive that goal, um, to run for election and to be the city council that you're supposed to be a very long time. Now, there are women in prison who are, some of them are put there willfully. Some of them were, uh, were, were accused wrongfully by white policemen. Their women get pregnant. They are in prison. Their children are in prison with them. Babies are in prison. What is the system? What dramatic system that we have who do not care about human life will see a woman having a baby and she's in prison and they can't find other, 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 other um, sort of Ways. community program that they can do for the time that whatever wrong that they have done that they can do it. Now the thing is, uh, Mercedes, I know you love social workers. Social work is good and social work is bad. A lot mm -hmm. of young men and women are in prison because social workers take them out of their parents' home. Yes. These, when they come out of the parents, they are anger. They are angry. And because of that, they got this anger, this vengeance inside of them that they want to do something that is tough and that is rough. And this is cause that we have so many young men and women in prison because the system deranged their mind, get them mentally ill, mentally sick. And that is a part of the, the program that they have, the system have from your mother's home to the uh, foster care program, to the prison, to the mental hospital, to the mental institution. So that is where they have black people all listed. What would be your motivation to get into that, you know, I get so worked up. <laughs> I get so worked up when I think about it. What would be your motivation of getting all the elected officials? Because as we know, elected officials talk to you today. They do with you because they are going in. And when they meet in there, they turn Republican. This all of a sudden, their shoe is so shine, like they're wearing the leather shoe from Italy. And they have the, the English one accent that they don't know you. So what would be your motivation of getting all these elected officials involved in saying no to women in prison, no to young men in prison, no to the social, social worker system of taking away our children. Children are being abused and mothers are being abused. Some can't take it, they take to the drugs, but who pushes them there but the system? First, the criminal system, I have to say that, um, thank you, Pat, um, for asking that question. I know it's, it's, it's hard as a woman and as a mom of four children myself. Um, the system needs to be eradicated, like a, any cancer, you need to eradicate the cancer. And just like that system that with the criminal justice and all the things that we're talking about, we need a total reform around it. And most of the things that happen is, like I said, is lack of opportunity parents go into so much problem and they never had the system to support them. You have teenage mom that a lot of those things that are not being addressed from early age. And that's one of the reasons I, I, I'm requesting and I'm going to work very hard day and night to make sure that we have a mental health checkup from school age. And I'm glad that the mayor talk about it, but I'm going to push for make sure that we level the playing field even on that too. And once we have that address, there's a lot of uh, uh, other problem will not kind of become chronic. It will be like acute and try to solve the problem right there and then. In the school building, if we have um, um, social worker, from there, they can understand if there's something is wrong, they can talk to the children and then they can relate to the mother. If the mother has something, you know, that's not right, then they can give the right referral 
and support our community. And if you have someone living in a place where water is falling all apart, all the uh, 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 appliances not working, the ceiling falling on them, right there, housing issue is a big factor as well. The, 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 the young folks getting up in a day, garbage all over the place, all the structure. We say we have nicer houses, but what are we doing? Where are we putting people to live? That have to be addressed as well. And then we're talking about healthcare. Of course, we're talking about mental and physical have to be addressed. And that's again, opportunity. We don't have that in our, in our system. The mother, if something going on wrong, if something, for example, they call the social worker, before we take the children, we have to provide the support because the child is better at home than being in going to different places. There is no stability and any child needs stability and opportunity as well. Because if you have the child going to a good school and they have enough uh, teachers in the school building to pay attention to that child, make the child feel special, the child gonna be more productive. They have sport where they can have the anger, they can have place there in sport. Once the child is focused on sport and have a good academic support, more likely that child gonna produce. They're going to be doing what they're supposed to do. A child is a child that needs nurture. We're supposed to nurture our children, and we're not doing that in the society. Nowadays, people just mind their business. They have 35 children in the school. It becomes stressful for the teachers as well. We need to give the assistant in the school building too. All those things is just a domino effect. You understand? If the home is not setting up right, the environment is not good, the mother have their own crisis and the crisis not being addressed. The child end up in the school. There is no one paying attention to that child. That child is a stranger in their own environment. It's a domino effect. Opportunity, that's why we're looking for Miss, Miss Pat before they get to the jail. And if they have to get in the jail system for whatever the reason, they should not be going there for any little tedious things. Because I don't think jail, like if somebody have mental illness, that's why we said we don't want police officer, we want a uh, uh, Department of Health to get involved in that. If somebody have a crisis, mental health crisis, why uh, uh, we need a police officer to go the, take that person? It should not happen that way. Those are all the things that we need to look at as a community and the reform going toward there, but that's my job as a city council member to make sure we hold everything accountable, everybody that involved in the equation. And I'm coming back to, it takes a village. If my neighbor is not doing well, talk to your neighbor, trying to refer the neighbor to the right place before it becomes a, a point where a police officer is gonna arrest that person. And the police officer don't have that support, then you have more problem into your hand. So it takes a village and it takes, people that really run the office, the government should be for the people, run by the people. And then we have more success story to talk about. Black Lives Matter, reform in the prison system, justice system. I need all the stakeholders in my community to be part of this process. Thank you, Ms. I know that you will have your answer and I just want to support you all the way to the top. You know, because Patricia Trim like to know, you know, I'm a go-getter and always try to make things happen. But um, call it, I'm, yeah. you, you, you are part of the community. You are an independent program producer. Um, what do you think uh, about the, the funding, the, 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 the um, request to defund the police? Should they be defunded or should they be di directed um, leadership role of getting the KKK out of the police force. Okay, so I think there's a combination of both. They need to defund the police officers um, that are doing wrong things. They need to get them off the force. They need to also be directed, but they need to want to be directed, not think they know what's better. And there is a thing called the, the blue wall of silence. And one of the reasons why so many bad things have been happening to black people and other people and other races throughout history is because of that blue wall of silence. Although this person may be a good person, to be able to work in the police department, 
they will keep silent, even though they know this person is not doing right things and knowing this person is hurting people, lying about people, getting people into jail that shouldn't be into jail. I think that there needs to be a actual community, um, what am I trying to say? A community forum. On this note, we said goodbye for now with our two guest speakers, Mercedes Nassis, candidate for the 46th district, and Colette Boston, independent pro program producer of Brick Heart Media, with our topic, Youths of the Community, and how can the community help our youths? So for now, we say goodbye until next week where you have the other part of this topic, this dynamic topic that the concern the community, you and the community. So for now, goodbye.